Hello and welcome to with Roman Anderson. This is the channel where we talk about economic, financial, and political thing, things on simple terms. Some of my listeners and, and video people that watch the program followers have asked me to do a summary on what they think is going to be coming in 2022. And that's what I'm here for to live you today. And um, let me give you a little background on those who've never seen me before. I have about 45, 45 videos up on YouTube. I've interviewed one of the top economic professors in the world. I've read over 100 books on economics and financing of that nature. And uh, I have a degree from New York University in, in government. Um, we're going to talk, let's start with inflation. Um, we need to start and define what is inflation. Inflation is the general loss of your purchasing power, purchasing power over time. And the thing about inflation is that you need to know how to measure inflation in order to figure out what inflation is. And the United States really doesn't ha have an accurate way of doing it. It was, the way we use now was developed in 1955 by a lady named Molly Oshansky. She did that for the Department of Agriculture and Linda Van Johnson needed something for his great society in order to monitor inflation. So he used this program that Molly wrote, which was not really used for inflation. The reason I'm bringing this up is to let you know that you can't measure things, inflation, you can't measure it, you really, you really can't do anything about it. So let's move on. For inflation, who are the winners? Homeowners are winners if you have a fixed lock-in rate that's low, or if you own physical assets such as antiques, land, paintings, things of that nature. The losers are fixed income people, um, people who, who get imp imported goods, um, prices of exports fall, and jobs sort of change when you have in, in some, some inflation. Um, the highest, the highest inflation right now we've had in, in about 30 years. My, uh, I anticipate through 2022, we're gonna see more inflation, we're gonna see higher inflation. One reason why, of course, the supply chain issue is not going away. And I think that also is something worth talking about also. Um, the, there is something in, in, in a supply chain called absolute advantage. It's an economics term. It's important to know because if you have, if you believe in absolute advantage, you believe you can produce all the goods needed in order to make your commerce work. And there's also something called comparative advantage where you trade for things that you can't produce as well as things you can produce as well. The reason why it's important is because that's how supply chains are, are done. Certain companies, certain organizations do things better than others. So it's easier for you to, to, to buy that supply rather than make it yourself. And in addition, people become specialists. Another thing about supply chains, which is going to be important for 2022, is something they call just-in-time. They no longer, people, companies no longer have huge inventories of items. They get delivered, they get put into the, into the product and shipped out. For example, a car has 3,000 items and they come from various places. So just in time is when the item arrives and it's not inventory. That's the way things are done. The outlook for supply chains right now again is a problem next year i i think we're going to have to see a problem next year the next thing is interest rates um is the debt service uh and the interest rates itself i believe that what's going to happen over the next few years as interest interest rates will be in decline which means it'll be more expensive for us to borrow money which means we have less money to use toward other items that 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 are are marginal in budget, I would guess. The final thing I want to talk about is something with the crowding out effect. What happens is once the government gets into the business of raising interest rates, they come they become competitive against private industry. So investors tend to put their money 
into U.S. government bonds because it's the safest type of investment you can make. So that's that's what sort of sort of happens, um, or what I expect that's going to happen with a crowding out effect. I think that there's going to be less investment in the stock market, and, and as interest rates climb, that money is going to go into Treasury bills. Um, so let's look at this. I think next year we have a very strong chance of beginning to show some recessionary um, issues. A recession is two quarters of negative gross domestic product. So I think within the next six, six, to, nine, six to nine quarters, we may be going into recession. The other thing I think we need to be concerned with is stagflation. Stagflation is when the unemployment rate begins to rise and inflation begins to rise at the same time. This is something that happened in the 70s. So basically, uh, I'm saying that it looks to me like we're seeing sort of a 70s economy reemerge. I'd like to thank you very much for your time. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Have a great day. Bye.